It's now time to talk about the human skeleton. So first of all, we're answering the question, what is the purpose of the human skeleton? Well, it's to protect organs. So for example, your skull, your cranium, protects your brain, your eyes, your ears, your rib cage protects your lungs, and your vertebral column protects your spinal cord. Getting into more detail now to do with the axial skeleton. The axial skeleton consists of the rib cage, the vertebrae, and the cranium. The functions of the axial skeleton is to protect your brain and spinal cord and to provide support. Moving on to the appendicular skeleton, what bones make up the appendicular skeleton? The scapula, so those are bones in the back of your shoulder, your clavicle, your pelvis and your limbs. The function of the appendicular skeleton is to allow movement of the body. We're going into more detail now to do with the structure of the long bones. So first of all, the long bones are covered by hard compact bone. This bone contains lots of calcium salts which make the bone hard and resistant to compression forces. The middle of the bone contains spongy bone. This has fewer calcium salts and contains spaces, and this means that that bone is less hard and less dense. The spaces found within that spongy bone contain bone marrow, which is responsible for producing blood cells, and it also stores fat. Not that I suggest anyone do this, but why does bone become soft when soaked in hydrochloric acid? It's because the hydrochloric acid dissolves those calcium salts. Without those calcium salts, the bone is much softer and less hard. What is a joint? A joint is a place where two bones meet. There are three classifications of joints, the freely movable joints, the partially movable joints, and the immovable joints. So the freely movable joints allow lots of movement. A good example here is the ball and socket joint. Partially movable joints only allow a small amount of movement. A good example here is the joints found in your vertebral column, so in your spine. Immovable fixed joints allow no movement at all and the joints in your skull or your cranium are immovable. So the ball and socket joint, we've already said that it allows a lot of movement. It allows movement in all directions. Both your shoulder and your hip are examples of a ball and socket joint. They are both freely movable joints. A hinge joint allows movement in one plane only, such as your elbow. A gliding joint allows bones to glide past one another in any direction along the plane of a joint, such as the wrist and vertebrae. The general name given to a ball and socket, hinge and sliding joint is a synovial joint. A synovial joint is a movable joint which contains synovial fluid. The synovial fluid is secreted by the synovial membrane. The purpose of the synovial fluid is to reduce friction between joints. It's oily in order to enable it to do this. It therefore acts as a lubricant. A capsule is a tough, fibrous material which surrounds a joint. Cartilage is strong material found at the end of a bone. The purpose of cartilage is to act as a shock absorber. What happens in someone with reduced cartilage or damaged cartilage is they have less of a shock absorber. It's going to become painful for them due to increased friction and the rubbing of bones. Moving on to ligaments, ligaments are made up of tough fibres. The role of ligaments is to hold bones together within a joint. The various properties of ligaments include the fact that they're strong, which enables them to resist stretching. They're also elastic, which enables the bones to move without dislocating. You might have heard of the term antagonistic muscles, but you might not be entirely sure what it means. What it means is that as one muscle contracts, the other muscle relaxes. The triceps and biceps are examples of antagonistic muscles which help to move the arm. The biceps contract and the triceps relax in order to raise the forearm, and the biceps relax and the triceps contract in order to lower the arm. When the bicep relaxes, it becomes longer and thinner. When the triceps contracts, it becomes shorter and thicker, and this allows our forearms to become straightened. We now need to go into detail as to how voluntary muscles and bones bring about movement within a synovial joint. So we know that the muscles are attached to bone. The muscles work antagonistically as one muscle contracts, the other one relaxes, and this pulls on the bone, which brings about movement. What is a tendon now? Tendons attach muscle to bone. Unlike ligaments, tendons are inelastic, they don't stretch. Muscle contraction pulls on a tendon, causing the bone to move. A little more detail now about the vertebral column. So remember, here you'll find partially movable joints, which allow little movement. The vertebrae are joined by discs of cartilage. Those cartilaginous discs provide shock absorbance. 
And altogether, the purpose of the vertebrae is to provide stability and support as opposed to free movement. You do not want your vertebral column moving. Healthy development of muscle and bones requires several dietary components. You need lots of protein in your diet for the growth and repair of your muscles. Vitamin D enables the uptake of calcium. Those calcium salts get absorbed at the gut and are used in the production of the hard material that bone's made up of. You'll often find that older women in particular suffer from a disease known as osteoporosis. Here the bone loses calcium salts and becomes more porous and less dense and more liable to being brittle and breaking. You find that women are more susceptible to osteoporosis due to the menopause when hormone levels decrease naturally. Unfortunately, there's no cure for osteoporosis, but a diet high in vitamin D and calcium can help. People with osteoporosis suffer from back pain and poor posture.